Hey guys, it's me back with another video. Y'all, y'all know I'm gonna say grace first and then I'm gonna get into it because once I start talking, it look like I can't stop. Okay, God is good, God is great. Thank you for the food we eat. Lord bless those that do not have any. If it be anything in this food to do my body any hurt, harm, or danger, I ask you in the name of the Most High for protection. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. Y'all, today, 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 I'm having me some catfish. Fried catfish sandwich, guys. Let me show y'all this. This is my catfish. It got sauteed onions on the top. Got mayo on there. Look at that fryer perfectly. It's catfish fillets. I got me some tomatoes. They go on it. And um, look at that, y'all. Before I go any further, I need for y'all to like, share, and subscribe to this video. Hit that notification bell. You know when I'm uploading. Give me a big thumbs up. And let's do our thing. So, let me do this. I'm going to pretend to put that. Oh, y'all didn't tell y'all. I also got some potatoes with um, sour cream and scallions and cheese on them. Let's see what they tasting like. <clears throat> Look, y'all. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's good. Let me cook this sandwich. And let's see what's cracking. I told them I was recording. I hope they don't come busting through the door. Y'all, keep on trying to drop my stuff. Look, y'all. Sauteed onions, tomatoes, catfish. Mm. Mm -mm. I lost my mater. Mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to remember to wipe my mouth, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. This is delicious. I've got my hot sauce and my ketchup. The hot sauce and the ketchup, y'all. It's my hot sauce, though. I don't know where my ketchup at. I think it's over there somewhere. Ooh. Sauteed onions on there, y'all. Oh, my God. Mmm. 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 This is so good. I just had a taste with some catfish. I was gonna do some catfish nuggets. And now, I want a sandwich. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So y'all, I told y'all I was going to have a story for y'all when I came back. Mm. I just want to eat a little bit first. Bear with a sister. Mm, mm, mm. What's up all my ocean beauties, my followers, my kings, my queens, and my people all over this blessed world. What up with thee? Y'all. Y'all 
I've been waiting to eat this all day. So yeah, I watched this story the other night. It was about this young woman, she's about 25 years old. Moved away from her family, moved to a whole nother town, state. She just wanted her independence, I guess. Anyway, she wound up meeting this guy when she was there, and uh, after she moved there, she wound up meeting this guy. So she was telling him that she really didn't want a relationship right at that time because she had just moved here. But he wasn't trying to hear that. Anyway, he's going on wherever he was he lived. And the next day, He show up with his mama. Now he done went to wherever they live, trailer, wherever they was living, and done told his mama about this girl. But the way he's putting it to the mama is that the, him and the girl is in love. They is in love. They been spending time together and they doing all this stuff together. The girl don't even know who he is other than seeing him for the first time. She didn't know who he was. Anyway, they show up at her house. And she was standing there like, really? You You're talking about this is my mom. She wanted to meet you. I told her all about you. She wanted to meet you. And all this stuff, I'm looking at it like, first of all, I thought it was strange when in the beginning I didn't tell y'all when he was asking her all them questions about who she lived with and all that. I knew something was up to him. I just didn't know what. But anyway, they show up at the door. Show him the door. He said, well, you're going to invite us in. She being courtesy because he with his, Kurt being, having respect because he with his mama. So she let him in. Well, she better than me because if I done told you that ain't nothing cracking and you show up at my door with your mama, oh, well, the mama going to learn the truth today. But, um, so she being nice, invited, invited them in, invited, offered the mama some tea or something to drink. She said, she said, yeah, um, just show me where thing. And she said, you sit down. She said, I'm, I'm going to make the tea. I know my way around the kitchen. So if you go in there, make the tea. Come back out with the tea, your teapot, and everything. Hand everybody their cup of tea. Her, her son, and the girl. They sitting there chatting it up. Y'all, this food is good. They sitting there chatting it up, and I knew I wasn't going to eat no two sandwiches. I don't even know why I made two sandwiches. Well, probably just for my, um, my thing, guys, I didn't even do a thumbnail. I don't know what's on my mind. Y'all, please forgive me. But. Okay. So, um, the mama came past the tea out or whatever. And, um, they sitting there chopping it up. She, they drinking the tea. Next thing you know, the girl started feeling funny. She started feeling real funny. So what she did was, 
got up like she was trying to go somewhere. I don't know where she thought she was going, but anyway, she got up out the chair, fell back down in the chair, come to find out what well, she passed out. When she woke up, she was in her bed, in her gown, and all of that. She want to know what the hell going on. She thinking that the mama drugged her, but she didn't drug her. The mama brought her own tea with her. And whatever was in that tea, the girl was allergic to it. Is what made her pass out like that. That's what that was. She she didn't, the mama didn't, I don't guess she did. It didn't look like she did it on purpose. <clears throat> in the beginning of the story. So she um wound up getting better or whatever. The son the went and told everybody that they engaged and just all kind of stuff. The girl telling the mama, when the son left, the girl telling the mama, something wrong with your boy because I ain't told him none of what he talking about. And I'm, I need to get up and get dressed because I need to go to work. The mama said, okay, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. She helped the girl out the bed. Put her house coat. She said, no, I need my clothes. She said, no. She walked the girl into a second bedroom and pushed her on the bed, tied her up, tied the girl, the mama, tied the girl up. Cause she was telling me she there ain't no plans of being with her son. Tied her up. So the boy, she called the boy on the phone and told the boy what had happened. Told him he needed to get back there pronto cause the old girl tripping. So, cause the mama's still thinking everything legit. I don't know why when the girl telling you that ain't nothing cracking. Make me think she was crazy too. But um, he get back to the house. Well, the girl telling him. He said, "Why did you tell my mama that wasn't nothing going on with us?" She said, "Cause it's not. I don't even know you. I seen you one time, other than when y'all showed up at my door." He said, "So now you're just gonna you're just gonna have to stay here until you come to your senses, till you realize that." I'm the one for you and this this crazy shit. So she never showed up to the work. Actually, it was her first or second day. She didn't show up for work. They come by the house. Nobody come to the door. Next thing they know, they see somebody come out the house with a suitcase dressed like a woman with a suitcase, put it in the back of her car, and drove off. Never came back. The car never came back. So, meanwhile, the mama in there making wedding plans and, and all types of stuff. So, um, the girl telling her to let her go. She won't tell nobody. And the mama said, no, you're destined to marry him. And he'll be real angry if I let you go. And all this kind of mess. So, when the boy wound up coming back... He wound up coming back, and uh, the second time, and some kind of way, the girl had to got to lose. She got to lose, but they done set booby traps all through her house, so she don't know what's going on. So she go to walk out the room, and lo and behold, one thing popped up and stuck her dead in the bottom of her foot. And I guess her so bad because she screamed out. That let them know that she was out there. So they run and go back and get her and patch her foot up, but got her tied back in the bed. So one day, well, it was a couple of days after, because she didn't show up at work, the boss winded up coming to the house. Because no call, you ain't accepting no call, you ain't telling nobody nothing. So he go to the house to see what was going on. Girl, these people invited him in like they just a big happy family. Never, he never did see her. Told him that she left going to the store and she haven't made it back yet, and just just standing there telling all kind of lies and stuff. The girl could hear the man talking though, and she, but they got her tied up, got her mouth gagged. She trying to make noise so he could come in there. He why I don't believe him. Next thing you hear. Back door creak. 
he actually heard her when she screamed out the first time, with, even with that thing in her mouth, because the room right there on the same floor, he heard her. And he knew something wasn't right. Because she told him that she moved there by herself. So where all these people come from? So he go, go like he leaving, park around the corner, come back and go come through the back door. He see them leave him, or see the boy leave him. He go upstairs. Push the door open. That she tied up. And that was the last you seen of him and her. The next thing you know, the house was up for sale again. And they was telling people that she left in the middle of the night. And a few people saw her put her suitcase in her car and she left in the middle of the night. Which turned out to be the dude dressed in her clothes. So, um, he, after, after the man and the, the girl and the man wound up disappearing, they was telling people that she left in the middle of the night, all that. What people couldn't figure out is why would she leave and leave all her stuff there? She just moved into the house. She left all her stuff there. So, um, a couple of months went on. A couple of months went on, and another young lady wound up buying the house. They didn't tell her the story what the hell was going on in the house, though. But she wound up getting the house. Everything was cool the first two, three weeks. Next thing you know, she started noticing little stuff. And her house wasn't right. So now she moved there. By herself, but her husband came like two weeks after that. And they, he the dude didn't know that she had a husband. He wind up coming. By the time the man got there, he meet the man outside and tell the man that the, uh, her name was Ro Rosalind or Rhonda or something. Said She said meet her at the food market down the street. So um, he leave and go down there. And come, he leave and go down there to meet her at the food market. And dude, what did he do when she when they went when they he dude left and went to the food market? The dude who told him that Rhonda, what I can't remember her name, y'all said meet her at the market. He went there. He came back cause he she wasn't at the market. He came back and the lady crossed the street beckon to him to come here. She telling him the story, you know, we always got them little neighbors that, that they watch out for everything. They know everything on the block going on. But if you ask them what's going on, they ain't going to tell you nothing. But they'll volunteer and tell you everything. So she was one of them. So uh, she called dude over and, and, and the husband and talked to him and told him about the first lady, how she disappeared in the middle of the night. They say she just up and left, but everybody in the neighborhood thinks something happened to her. But can't nobody prove it. They can't prove it. So they, as time went by, they just everybody just forgot what was going on, I guess. So the man go over there, he's thinking about everything this lady done told him. He decided to go to the house. Check out the house. Make sure the basement was intact. Everything was intact. And it's like when you go through the basement door, that one was unlocked. But you go downstairs, and that basement door had a little riggedy like lock on it. So first time he didn't trouble it. He just checked, shook the lock, and went on back where he was going. Went on back upstairs. When his wife got to telling him about the strange stuff happening in the house. That's what made him go searching more. He go in the basement, kick the lock off the thing. Well, he didn't kick it off. He took a, a crowbar, y'all, and pulled it off because the lock was riggedy. He, all he had to do was bump it. It probably would have came open anyway. He go down there. The first thing he see 
is this lady wrapped up in plastic, thick plastic. She's sitting up with her eyes open and everything. Just sitting there, dead as hell. It was the girl that disappeared all them years ago. So he see her, then he hear his wife scream. So he run back upstairs because the boy, he hear the wife scream. I'm getting ahead of myself, y'all. He run back upstairs to see what was going on with his wife. She said, somebody was just in this room, was standing over me. So now he really says, he go back down, he tell her he said, somebody in the basement. He go back down there, and why do one day always grab a damn hammer or a, a golf club? You know this person is dangerous. I know grab what you got, but come on, y'all. In this big old house, you can't find nothing but a golf club. Come on now. So anyway, y'all know that's TV. Anyway, um, he go down in the basement to check the girl to make sure she dead. And as he went to come back up the stairs to tell his wife, the dude got his wife, got the gun in her back, and telling him to put the golf stick down and tell him, just told him the story. Told him that he had met the girl that was wrapped in plastic. He had met her. He brought his mom over, and his mom made him do all those things to her because the mama wanted some kids. She wanted some grandkids and she wanted them to be married. Basically, I guess trying to say the perfect life. I don't know what she was looking for. But uh, all the stuff that was happening, come to find out the son, the son killed the mama first. They never did show her, but the son killed the mama first. Then um, he got the girl and because he was mad at the girl. He told the girl, look what you made me do. You made me kill my mama. So that's why he killed the girl. So the girl that moved in the house, the lady, second lady that moved in the house, resembled the girl who he had wrapped in plastic. He thought this was this woman that came back, y'all. And somebody else's body. Told him that, that's close as you could get, but that's fine. You're still beautiful. This nigga was crazy. He was crazy. So, um... The daddy put the golf club down, and um, Mari, Jamariana. Oh well. Anyway, so he put the golf club down because this dude had a gun on his wife, right? So they going down the stairs. He bringing her down in the basement. This nigga mess around and slip. Slipped and shot himself. And when he shot himself, the husband went to work on his ass. Come to find out they had been looking for the boy forever. The mama, he said the mama was making him do that. She wasn't the first girl. She wasn't the first girl that he had did that to. When they got to busting down the walls and stuff, they were finding other young women. And the name of the movie is uh, The People Next Door, I think it is. I think it's The People. The People Next Door? No, it wasn't The People Next Door. I think it's called The People of Tuck County. That's what it's called, the people of Tuck County. Man, that movie was something else. I couldn't believe that. That movie was something else. And this boy slipped and shot himself. He shot himself like in his side or something. And the, the husband went to wailing on his ass. Guys, we have to be very, 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 very careful when we meet new people. And people be obsessed with you and you don't even know it. You thinking, you know, we cool or whatever. They actually obsessed, and you don't find out till you get ready to cut them off. Sometimes you find out before then. But most of the time you find out when you finna cut them off, then that other person come out. But I'm the type, you let your other person come out. I got a couple of people in me, too, that you don't want to see. I keep them contained, but they there. They, they I, think, I believe we all got other personalities. Some of us are stronger than others. I don't know. That's just my way of thinking. I don't know. 
But anyway, I need for y'all to like, share, and subscribe my video once again. Uh, give it a big thumbs up. Hit the notification bell so you know when I'm uploading. And y'all, let's get to this 500 so we can uh, have another giveaway. Okay, okay. Remember, guys, y'all, I knew I was going to eat no three sandwiches. But I did eat the sandwiches. I had six potatoes. I ate those. Um, and I ate a, a separate piece of fish. I try not to do so much bread because I'm still, y'all see, I got my little workout clothes on. I'm trying to get this weight down. So, um, on that note, I love coming to eat with y'all. Thank y'all for letting me come into y'all home and eat with y'all. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. So, on that note, remember, if you ain't got something good to say to somebody, something that'll make that person's day, help that person on their way, Remember what I always tell you, you don't want to be the straw to break the camel back. You might think you do, but you really don't because once you break the camel back, insaneness come out of the camel on the person that's on the camel. Uh, however you want to, it's crazy. Don't break the camel's back. Get away from the camel if you think you're going to break his back. Remember, if you ain't got something good to say to somebody, something to make somebody's day, keep your opinion to your damn self. I'm out.